namo bhagavati vasudevaya om namo bhagavati vasudevaya om namo bhagavati vasudevaya so I'd like to seek um, your good wishes and your blessings so that uh, we can uh, share something on the Bhagavad Gita. I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And we have um, uh, done the overview of four chapters of the Bhagavad Gita and we're looking at the fifth chapter, which is uh, called Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. Very beautiful chapter as they all are. Uh, just a very quick, uh, short summary of uh, what we've done so far. So, first chapter, Krishna's main man, his main military commander, decides he doesn't want to fight. Oh, and thank you very much, Lena, for a beautiful darshan. Always very, very, very nice to see. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, he didn't want to fight. He had uh, many, many reasons, which were quite reasonable reasons, but ultimately it was a weakness of heart because he was a warrior, he was an upholder of the law. And um, the opposition had broken the law many, many, many times. So it was um, perhaps something that uh, was surprising that he didn't want to fight. But of course, if that wasn't the case, then Krishna wouldn't have had to speak the Bhagavad Gita or sing the Bhagavad Gita, and we wouldn't be here discussing this glorious conversation between the Lord and his pure devotee, Arjun. Uh, so that's the first chapter. And second chapter, Krishna, uh, Arjun asks Krishna for help. He can see that this problem is far bigger than what he can handle. Krishna immediately takes him onto the spiritual platform he shows, he, he tells him that he should be identifying himself, not with the body, but with the soul, which is what he really is, the consciousness. And he also explains in brief, the duties that uh, uh, belong to the both, the body and the soul, not just the soul itself. We also have a duty whilst we have a body, that's called Swadharma, that's our temporary duty. We have an eternal duty, which is in accordance with the soul. And then he describes the person, the nature of that person who does his duties, both duties, Sanatan Dharma and Swadharma. Third chapter, Krishna describes a little bit more detail about duty done with attachment or detachment to the fruits and how one who performs his duty with detachment is an example to the whole world. And that person also avoids sinful activities. And Arjun asks him some se se several very nice questions throughout the Gita. And the, in the third chapter, he asks him, what makes one sin, even if one doesn't want to sin? And Krishna is, is explains to him that simply it's lust, which is um, associating or uh, identifying with this body of ours, as opposed to the soul. And then the fourth chapter, which is what we covered in the last two weeks, uh, he explains how uh, transcendental knowledge, Gyan, is passed down from guru to disciple. And he was the first guru. He passed it to Ikshwaku, and Ikshwaku passed it to Manu, and like that. Uh, and he also explains his mission on earth and his primary mission, uh, maybe I can ask devotees, uh, what is his mission on earth? Anybody like to share? Should be. Yes. Hare Krishna. Actually, uh, uh, yeah, go on, go on, Indraleka. Yeah, go on. No, whoever wants to do, go ahead. Please, go ahead. No, no, go on. Yeah. But actually, you are seasoned de devotee. You know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will not talk. Okay, I will not talk. <laughs> no, no, you can. But uh, just Shruti. One. Yeah, Shruti, did you want to say something? Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, to uphold uh, mm. uh, dharma for righteousness yeah. and to uh, protect uh, and to also protect uh, those who uh, venture on the path of uh, uh, righteousness. So 
to yeah. vanquish the wicked as he says uh, 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 paritranaya sadhu nam to protect uh, the good and uh, to vanquish uh, the wicked so right right very good sadhu nam vinashaya cha dushkritan and Ji, very good and uh, just to let everybody know shruti is our uh, teacher on uh, oh, wednesdays she is a bhagavad gita person and she mm-hmm. is absolutely amazing and when she doesn't when she's a little late mm-hmm. i get the students looking at me with the <laughs> daggered eyes you know <laughs> where is she <laughs> but uh, she's very very good and today we have the fortune of her uh, reciting the fifth chapter or or parts of the fifth chapter at least so absolutely shruti but actually there's a more important reason why he comes that's the uh, external reason he comes to reestablish religion and destroy irreligious people but what's the what's the real reason why he comes anybody want to share Hare yes Krishna. yes he he comes to give joy to his devotees yes for sure for sure but uh, what is the what is uh, the worse uh, in the bhagavad gita straight after he says i've come to uh, deliver the pious or and uh, kill off the uh, i've come to annihilate the miscreant yeah. and protect yeah. protect yeah. the devotees yeah what's the worst after that 49 janma karma chame devi oh what yeah janma actually karma come to do is to give us knowledge about himself so we go back to him that's what he's come to do that's his real mission that's otherwise he can send anybody to come and destroy he can send poshuram <laughs> he can finish for sure i'm going to finish everybody off but he comes to to deliver us by giving himself to us about himself knowledge about himself so very important to understand that that is real mission his mission is not reestablish it is in one sense because that's what he says but he can send anybody to do that right he can send anybody to do that and then he describes the different types of karmas uh, action in action be karma uh and then he talks about importance of acquiring knowledge through the spiritual master so now let's go to the fifth chapter and that oh cracky have i got it open uh so Okay, fifth chapter. Let's hope I can open it. Ah, yes. Then. Oh, okay. Where's the? Okay, let's read this way. So um, we can do uh, the first. I think uh, let's have a look how many verses. I just check how many verses. Ah. Uh, So, I think it has twenty nine verses, Prabhuji. That's so. right. But uh, we t- we take themes. Uh, yeah. So let's take the first theme, which okay. Twelve verses. If you can do the first twelve, and who'd like to read? Are there any volunteers who don't get a chance often to read the Bhagavad Gita? You can actually read to all of us in English. Anybody like to do that? Maybe Sonia. Don't get a chance often to read. Yeah. Okay. 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 नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओं श्री परमात्म नम अथ पंचमोध्याय अर्जुन उवाच 
सन्यासम कर्मणाम कृष्ण पुनर्योगम चशम ससी यच्छेय एतयोरेकम तन्मे ब्रूहि सुनिश्चितम हरे कृष्णा uh, अर्जुना सेड ओ कृष्णा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आस्क मी टू रिनाउंस वर्क एंड देन अगेन you recommend work with devotion now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial shri bhagavan uvacha sanyasa karma yogascha nishreya sakara ubhav tayostu karma sanyasat the blessed lord said the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation but of the two work in devotional service is better than the rein- renunciation of works न्येय स नित्य सन्यासी यो न द्वेष्टि न कांक्षति निर्द्वंद्वो हि महाबाहो सुखं बन्धात् प्रमुच्यते वन हु नीदर हेट्स नॉट डिजायर द फ्रूट्स ऑफ हिज एक्टिविटीज इज नॉन टू बी ऑलवेज रिनाउंस्ड सच अ पर्सन लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑल ड्यूअलिटी easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated o mighty armed arjuna very good so the first two verses krishna as arjuna asks the question again he asks uh, what is it what is better renunciation or working please be clear <laughs> and krishna is very clear he says so it's better to work in devotion than to give up your duties okay सांख्य योग पृथक बाला प्रवदंति न पंडिता एकम अप्यास्थित सम्यग उभयोर विंदते फलम only the ignorant speak of karma yoga and devotional service as being different from the analytical study of material world sanskya those who are actually learned learned say that he who applies himself well to the one of these paths achieves the results of both yat sankhyaih prapyate sthanam tadyogair api gamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha one who knows that the position reached by means of renunciation can also be attained by works in devotional service and who therefore sees that the path of works and path of renunciation are one see things as they are सन्यासस्तु महाबाहो दुखम आप तुम योगतः योग युक्तो मुनिर ब्रह्म न चिरेणाधिगच्छति unless one is engaged in the devotional service of the lord mere renunciations of activities cannot make one happy the sages purified by works of devotion achieve the supreme without delay thank you so much uh, beautifully read beautifully read um thank you prabhu uh, hari krishna ankit would you like to read the next six uh, yeah okay yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriya One who works in devotion, 
who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses, is dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never entangled. Mm. So Krishna is very clear about uh, one who renounces. It's not good enough. You've got to actually act in devotion. Naiva kinchit karo me de yukto manye tatatpavitr pashan shunvan prishan jignan ashnan gachan swapanchvashan panchvasan Oh, you can do the next one as well. Pralapan visrajan grihnan unmishan nimishan api indriyan indriyatheshu vartanta itidharayan. A person in the divine con in divine in the divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about. Sleeping and breathing, always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all. <laughs> while speaking, ev uh, evacuating, receiving, or opening or closing his eyes, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged with their objects, and that is that he is aloof from them. Brahmanyadhaya karmani Sangam tyakva karoti yaha Lipyate na sapa pena Padma patrami vambhasa One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. This is a really wonderful verse. Doing the duty, doing whatever is a swadharma, but if we're not attached and we're surrendering the results onto the Lord, that person is never affected by sinful acts. So this is karma yoga at its best. And it's very, very close to bhakti yoga itself. <laughs> Kaye namana sa buddha kevalair indriyair api yogi na karma kurvanti sangam tyakto atma shuddhaye. The yogis, abandoning attachment, act with body, mind, intelligence, and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification. Yukta karma falam tyakva shantim apnoti naishthikim ayukta kama karena fale saktoni badhyate. The steadily devoted soul attains unaltered peace because he offers the results of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor becomes entangled. Wonderful. Let's see if we can change the screen. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Shruti, for reading so beautifully. It's so amazing when you read. <laughs> so just a very quick sub overview of the whole chapter. We saw here how Krishna is explaining to Arjun because Arjun is confused about whether to work or not. Krishna is really uh, laying it down that you should work in devotion or work without attachment and offer those fruits, results to, to me. That person is sinless uh, and in actually doing uh, Nishkam Karma Yoga. So Arjun wanted further clarification as he was confused by Krishna's instructions in the fourth chapter. And the Lord guides him how to turn work into worship, outwardly performing all actions. So the devotee will do um, whatever needs to be done. 
but inwardly he's not uh, attached to those fruits. And the wise man is uh, purified by the fire of transcendental knowledge. He achieves, attains peace, detachment, forbearance, spiritual vision, and bliss. How do we get there? So every journey starts with a step. And in this chapter, Krishna explains how to take steps in the right direction. This is the beauty of the fifth chapter. There are steps leading to further and entanglement in worldly complexity, but there are also steps leading to a life of liberation, freedom and tranquility. So there are four themes in this chapter. First one is Nishkam Karma Yoga. We've read through the 12 verses where Krishna is explaining Nishkam Karma Yoga. Do your duty, don't be attached to the results, you remain sinless and you offer those results to Krishna, to the Lord. So the results are uh, surrendered to the Lord. Then we'll see the next step uh, uh, after we read the next verses. The result of such action is that we will realize we are not actually doing anything. The soul is desiring, but the, the action, the actual uh, action is done by the body, which is controlled by the devatas. And also we have the permitting factor of the super soul. And then there's a third theme, uh, when taken shelter of the Lord, the soul will see all souls with equal vision. You'll see a fantastic verse that will come across. And the Lord gives the first hint of Astanga Yoga because the next chapter is all about Astanga Yoga. So um, the Lord gives him a hint about Astanga Yoga. And then the very last verse, 29th verse, I don't know if we'll get there today, but talks about, it's the peace formula, very powerful verse. So the first theme, the first 12 verses, uh, Arjun still considers work and renunciation to be mutually exclusive, i.e. I can't, uh, I have to go to the forest. I can't do my duty because it'll entangle me. No, no, the duty will not entangle you as long as one is not attached to the fruits and offers the results of those activities to the Lord. So Krishna says, an individual who works in spiritual consciousness is automatically elevated to the platform of renunciation. Even though he's working, he's actually renounced. If one engages in righteous work, offering the results to God, and all the while keeping alert to the ultimate goal, such work becomes worship. Often we say, "Work, my work is my worship. No, it can't be unless it is related to the Supreme Lord by offering the results of that work to the Lord. That's how you connect it to God. It's not that I just go to work and earn a living for my family and my work is my worship. Uh -uh. There has to be God connected in that, in the center of that somewhere. For most people, it would be premature and detrimental to sever themselves from worldly relationships and duties in pursuit of spiritual perfection. For most people, that is the case. We can't just detach ourselves because we'll ultimately fall down and come back. But the path of karma yoga offers this progressive means of spiritual development while st simultaneously staying in this world. So it's a, um, a very sweet way of connecting with the Lord, but not rejecting everything around us. We serve the Lord by engaging or dovetailing everything we do to spiritual life. Just, uh, and then he gives the example, doesn't he, in this uh, chapter, in this uh, first 12 verses, that the lotus leaf surrounded by water, but it's always dry. So in the, we can stay in this world, but we cannot be uh, destroyed by it. We can remain aloof from it, from its influences. So what's the lesson to take from this? How do we purify our work obligations? One way to do that is offer a portion of that results to the Lord. Whatever you are comfortable with, you should donate to the Lord and his service and to the devotees and their service. Whatever that is, whatever you're comfortable with, make a start, make a start. And Rukhva Goswami had a very high standard 50% he would go to the Lord, 25% he would leave for the family, and then 25% keep as reserves. 
but you do whatever you think is practical for you, but make a start somewhere. I'm sure most of you, all of you are already doing that. So do a little bit more. This is the idea. We give a little bit more. We stretch ourselves for the sake of bhakti. That's always a very good thing to do. Okay, uh, so let's go to the next one. That's only a few verses actually, five, four, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah, four verses. So let's go. Text number 13. Would you like to read? Yeah, Arti Ben, would you like to read? You don't often get a chance. Oh, Yogini. Hello. Hello. Oh, Arti Ben, good, good. Okay. Oh, Arti ben. So, um, four verses now, uh, Shruti. So, you can start with this one. Uh, number 13, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. Sarva Sukhambashi, Navadmare Pure Dehi, Naiva Kurvanakarayan. When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working nor causing work to be done. <laughs> The embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted an, by the modes of the material nature. Nor does the Supreme Lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activities. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of the ignorance which covers their real knowledge. Jnane natuta dat jnanam yesham nashita matmanah tesham aditya vat jnanam prakashayati tat param when, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nescience is destroyed, then the knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the daytime. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Arti Ben. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So, the second theme, it's all about, uh, very interesting, this is quite a difficult philosophical point that Krishna gives. For us, it's uh, hard to get into our consciousness, but let's see if we can. While living in this world, one can easily assume the mentality that we are the directors, the controllers, and the breadwinners. But in reality, Krishna is explaining in, this, in these four verses that there are three doers in any activity, not just us. And our, our aspect is a, lit, is a small aspect. The individual soul, the soul can only desire. That's the only thing we can do. I want this. And then suddenly we are thinking, I have achieved this. But actually Krishna is explaining, you haven't achieved anything. All you've done is you've had a desire, a thought to do something. What to speak of controlling the results of our activities? We are barely in control of even the physical and mental tools with which we perform those activities. We hardly know anything. We don't even know how the hair on our head grows. Anyway, so who are these three doers? We are 
but only in so far as desiring something. Then the super soul, super soul sanctions everything. He resides within the heart. If it wasn't for the super soul uh, sanctioning, we couldn't do anything. He allows it to happen. And the third doer is the material nature. The devatas, the demigods, the ability to perform activity comes from the devatas who arranges the necessary facilities. <clears throat> we can give an example. I want to move my hand. So I'm moving my hand. Actually, the desires come from the soul to move the hand. But the soul cannot actually control this. The desire is there. The super soul within the heart is sanctioning it. He's allowing the demigods, the demigod of hands or earth or whatever it is, uh, water, fire, air, to get together, have a quick meeting, and they decide, yes, let the man move his hand. That's what he desires. The super soul has sanctioned it. <laughs> so it, it, opens, it happens automatically pretty much, but actually there's a big science behind it. So we are thinking, because we can't see the devatas performing these activities, we are thinking I'm the doer, but actually we're not. The doers, we are simply the desirer. So let's have a look at a quick diagram. The soul desires, the Lord doesn't interfere. He sanctions it. But he's not responsible for our karma. We are responsible for our karma because we've got the original desire. Um, just I'll go through it quickly. Then the modes of material nature, they carry out those actions to fulfill the desires of the soul. So who's actually responsible? Well, we are, because we are the ones who had the desire in the first place. If the desire wasn't there in the first place, the Lord wouldn't have sanctioned it, nor would material nature have carried it out. So let's have a look at the lesson. This is a really important lesson. It's a very practical lesson as well. When we desire to buy something, we want something, which may not be so essential. We should think once, think twice, think thrice whether we really, really need the item we desire. And generally we'll find that by the time we have asked this ourselves, to ourselves, the third time, we can probably decide that we didn't need the item at all. This demonstrates that the soul can only desire and also we can control our desires. So if we can, can the trick, the trick here is to, desire the, to control the desires in the first place. If we are able to control our mind, if we are able to control what we want, then we will actually have a very, very strong chance of making strong spiritual progress because we will not be so entangled in wanting this, wanting that. We will actually have time for spiritual considerations. So this is a really important practical one. When we want to buy something, when we want something, we think again and again and again, do I really need this? Three times and most probably we'll find actually we don't need it. So yeah, let's, 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 let's uh, push ahead. The next one takes us to 28, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we can do the last one as well, actually. Good. Okay. Let's, let's see if we can finish the chapter today. <clears throat> okay. So who'd like to read uh, the English translations? Please, uh, as well. Uh, you can just unmute yourself and we'll see who is. If anybody would like to volunteer. Otherwise, we'll uh, volunteer somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the language, yes, fine. So, uh, yes, uh, Sh uh, Shruti, please continue. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Tad Buddha yas tad atmanas tad nishthas tad parayana gachantya punara vrittim jnana nirdhuta kalmasha 
Hare Krishna. When one's intelligence, mind, face, and refuge are all fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgiving through complex knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Shwapa Kecha Pandita Samadarshina the humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, now scarced. Those whose minds are established in sameness and equanimity have already conquered the conditions of birth and death. They are flawless like Brahma, Brahma and thus they are already situated in Brahman. No dvijet prapya cha priyam sthira buddhi asam mudho brahma vid brahma nisthitaha. A person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant, no laments upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self-intelligent, who is unbewildered, and who knows the science of God is already situated in transcendence. Bahya, uh, the next one as well, Prabhuji, 21 as well. Yes, carry on at the moment. Okay. Bahya Sparshe Shwasaktatma Vindatyat Sukham Brahma Yoga Yuktatma Sukham Akshayam Ashnute. Such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness, for he concentrates on the Supreme. <laughs> An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O oh, son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Thank you, uh, Indalikamaji. Uh, very good. I think um, Rohit would like to read. Yes. Okay. Can I read this one? No, uh, let the, the, san the Sanskrit first. Okay. Shakno di haivaya sodum. I apologize, sir. My phone just dropped off. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is situated and is happy in this world. Yonta Sukhontara Ramas Tathantar Jyoti Revaya Sayogi Brahma Nirvanam Brahma Bhuto Dhigachati One whose happiness is with it, who is active and rejoices with it, and whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately hates the Supreme. 
लभन्ते निर्वाणम् ऋषय Those who are beyond the dual taste that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged with it, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings, and who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. Those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endowing for perfection, are assured of liberation in the supreme in the very near future. Sparshan Kritva Bahid Bahyam Chakshushchai Mande Bruho Prana Pano Samo Kritva Nasa Bhyantara Charino. You can do the next one as well. Yatin Driyamano Buddhir Munir Moksha Parayanaha. Vigate chabhaya krodho yah sada mukta eva saha. Shutting out of all external sense objects, keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows, suspending the inward and outward breaths within the nostrils, and this controlling the mind, senses, and intelligence, the transcendental aiming, and liberation becomes free from desire, fear, and Anger, one who is always in this state is certainly liberated. We might as well do the last verse as well. So then we've completed the whole chapter today, which is great. Bhoktaram yatniyatapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suhridam sarvabhutanam nyatvamam shanti mrichati Om Tat Saditi Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri Shri Krishna Arjuna Sambade Sanyasa Yogo Nama Panchamo Dhyaya Shri Krishna Jai 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 A person in full conscious of me, knowing me the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the packs of material visionaries. Wonderful. Thank you, Roy. And thank you, Shruti. Just a quick plug for tomorrow's satsang. Uh, Shruti is going to be reciting the Narayan coverage in Sanskrit. Uh, so please do join us. This is in the sixth canto, eight chapter at 3.30. And um, this is a coverage. Coverage means shield, uh, protective, protective armor, which was given to Indra to protect him from the dev, uh, demons. And very powerful set of uh, uh, mantras. So we're very fortunate to have a very powerful person, Shruti, to recite those. <laughs> so... Please the power the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. Oops. So uh, let's have a look. Okay. So two more themes. Uh, we should be able to just cover them uh, and we'll finish at uh, quarter past eight and then take some questions if there are any. Uh, so the advanced spiritualist, this is a really fantastic verse, is able to see a spiritual soul is present in all varieties of life, be it plant, animal, human, and therefore utmost respect is given to every living being. So this is as a result of realizing that we are not the doer, we are the spirit soul. When the spirit soul realize, realizes that, he will see everybody with equal vision. 
So whether one is in a plant body or animal body, or human body, the soul is in every uh, material uh, living entity or a living body. So we, the, the spiritualist treats everybody with equal vision. They may treat them differently according to, you know, you treat a plant differently from an animal, from a human, but you'd have the same spiritual vision that the soul is existing in all. And this is the worst, very, very sweet worst. Vidya, Vinaya, Sampane, Bhamane, Gavi, Hastini, Sunicheva, Swapakircha, Pandita, Samadarshina. The humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahman. So we have the bar Brahman there, the cow, elephant, the dog, dog eater. He sees them all equally. He treats them differently according to their bodies, but he will see the soul within each and the super soul residing with each, within each. Each living entity of, is of the same spiritual quality and different bodies with different qualities are produced according to karma, what we have we done in the past, according to our desires, what do we want, and according to how we're thinking. These three things are fundamental in what, how we get our bodies. Thus a spiritualist is not free, is not only free of racism, nationalism, ageism, sexism, but also speciesism. <laughs> so what's the lesson? This is really very nice lesson actually. If we have prejudice against anyone due to the color of their skin, then we should understand that we are in the gross ignorance. If we're thinking this is a white man or a black man, and therefore he's inferior, we're at this level here, gross ignorance. So we have to be careful. However, we have the opportunity to correct ourselves by remembering this verse that we recited, 518. This is a really, really important point because everybody has some prejudice. We have to be very careful, be mindful that I am now, sometimes it's, it's institutional racism is instituted within us. We think we're superior, but actually we have the same spiritual quality that anybody else has, including plant, animal, let alone human. So this is quite a, a fundamental lesson. And if we are prejudiced, we are in gross ignorance. That's really, that's where we are. So let's go on to the next one, uh, which is the last verse, we keep it as a separate theme because it's such an important, uh, um, it's such an important uh, verse. Just one second. Just one second. It says, a person who is in full consciousness of me. This is the verse number 29. Knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary, beneficiary of all sacrifice. So Krishna is the ultimate beneficiary of everything we do. He is the Supreme Lord. And he is also our well-wisher. Those three things. It's for him we do it because he's the Supreme Lord and he's our well-wisher. If we know those three things, then we will have peace. So this verse guides us to live peacefully even during our stay in this world. We come in this world with nothing. We will leave with nothing. In the interim, our claims to proprietorship, ownership, and our attachments to different objects, they create fear, insecurity, conflict. And change is a constant theme in this world. Our relationships are changing. The environment is changing. Our possessions are changing. The coronavirus is mutating, that our desires are changing. Everything is changing to the extent that we develop a sense of detachment, understanding the Lord to be the proprietor and we are only caretakers. To that extent, we experience a sense of peace within. 
So he's in charge. He owns everything. We simply his caretaker. Then we don't get too attached because we know this is for him. This belongs to him. It's for him. And he's also our well-wisher. He cares for us. Really powerful lesson, this one. If we're feeling stressed, and is there anybody in this world who's not feeling stressed? If we're feeling stressed about a particular situation, and therefore we're not at peace with ourselves, analyze the reason for that stress. Why are we being stressed? And will a sense of detachment, understanding our caretaker position in this world, help us reduce the stress of the situation? So if we take the position that, okay, it's not really mine anyway, it belongs to him, and I'm just taking care of it, if he wants me to take care of it, does that help us reduce the stress that we're putting ourselves on, in? So this is a peace formula comes in again and again, actually. Peace is quite an important aspect of the Bhagavad Gita. He talks about transcendental peace. He's talking about this on a war, on a, on a battlefield, and he's urging Arjun to fight. So some people you might think this say, might say that this, hey, it's a bit contradictory, isn't it? Talking about peace on a battlefield where Krishna is urging his main man to fight. But actually, no, because the peace comes from the sense of detachment, the sense of duty, the sense of um, offering, uh, not, yeah, uh, not being attached and offering everything to the Lord. That's where this peace comes in. So peace comes quite a few verses, text 20, uh, 66 of chapter 2. There's no possibility of peace if you don't have a steady mind. Text 70 of text, uh, chapter 2, that person who's always trying to fulfill all his desires, never be peaceful. <laughs> 439 is talking about uh, a faithful man who's dedicated to transcendental knowledge. Having heard, having achieved it quickly, he attains peace. And then 512, he talks about how the devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers everything to the Lord. This is the peace formula. We've, we've read that a couple of times now. Fundamental point. And then he talks about peace is a quality of the Brahmins. And then finally he talks about peace in the ultimate sense when we surrender everything to him, we will get total transcendental peace. So that's the end of uh, chapter uh, five. Any, any questions, any comments, anything that's not clear and, um, or anything you'd like to share from your experiences? Question. Yes. And this one, uh, what you're telling everyone, uh, you should see equally like, uh, uh, yeah. it, it gives like uh, everyone you should love as Krishna part and parcel. Yeah. So yeah. when we read in books, so it's okay. Theoretically, it is good. But when we come to our practical life, I see like in devotees also, yeah. it's not yeah. to offend anyone, but uh, they will uh, just, uh, I mean, uh, they will like, there are some differences, what you told uh, this uh, ism, you say, right? Or like, <laughs> or they will keep which are them to favorable and they will like unfavorable and they treat it like there are this type of uh, devotees also. So how could we yeah. understand yeah. practically and put them Into theoretically practice. to understand? First, to have the theoretical understanding is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gyan is good. And then ultimately we have to turn that into Vigyan. And we can only actually do that by the mercy of the Lord. To see everybody with equal vision is a great sage. And that can only happen by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So if we, if we within ourselves are thinking because of their body, because of their body, the color of their skin, that that person is inferior to me, we should understand that we are in a, we're thinking in a wrong way. And we can ask the Lord, please help me to get my thinking right. And that is the mercy of the, by the mercy of the Lord, 
we will be able to get rid of that thinking because that thinking is there because we are in the bodily platform. We're thinking with the body, but actually the soul is not black or white or brown. The soul is spiritual, one with Krishna in terms of spiritual spark. But we can't put it into practice unless we have the mercy of the Supreme Lord. How do we get the mercy? We beg for it. We ask for it. We petition Krishna for it. And just if we have a theoretical, at least we know we're thinking wrong. My thinking is wrong, my dear Lord, help me. So devotees, they may fall into that category, but at least they will have a theoretical understanding. This is wrong. Inherently, they will understand this is wrong. I'm thinking something that is not correct. But because of past conditioning, it's not always possible for devotees to immediately come to the transcendental platform. But the Lord is very, very kind. He answers the prayers of his devotees. So when the devotee prays to the Lord, my dear Lord, help me, help me, then uh, that help will come. But main thing is we have to understand that we are, if we are discriminating, we are in ignorance. If that knowledge is there, then at least we can petition the Lord, help me to get rid of my wrong thinking. But if that knowledge is not there in the first place, then we will be forever uh, attached to the body and everything that goes with it. Does that make sense, Rohit? Yes, it does. Prayer, petitioning the Lord, crying out to the Lord, please, let me stop thinking this stupid way. Ankit, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, no, I'm just uh, I'm taking it in today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I like what you have to share, so I ask you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, I uh, I need to learn more, and uh, but uh, yeah, when, when I do have a thought, I will definitely. Uh, yeah, share. no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Indra Kamaji. Hare Krishna. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Um, you just, well, it's, it's written that we come uh, empty handed and we go yeah. empty handed. Yes. But that is materially, right? We cannot, we don't come with anything in our hand, but, but we do come with our knowledge, with uh, our karma, right? Mm -hmm. And our ego. In yes. this body? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. But we're still empty handed, like, like we're yes. naked. Like, we? like, um, if, uh, like physical thing, we don't, we cannot bring anything. But yeah. then, yes, we, we bring our karma. Otherwise, yeah. we would not be here. Right? Yeah. The main thing is that, that what that's talking about is our attachments to possessions. Because when we come to this world, all we have is this body, right? Yes. And uh, when we leave, you know, we leave with nothing. We come with nothing, we leave with nothing. So, how most problem is we have a problem which is at the gross level. We attach to items. And that's what um, these, uh, these teachings uh, try to advise us. Don't be so attached to your material possessions. You come with nothing, you're going to go with nothing. But of course, karma is always going to be there. Um, and uh, our desires and our consciousness, those three things come stay with us whilst we're in this material world. But when we leave this material world, those things stay here. Our desires become pure spiritual desires, no more material desires. Consciousness becomes pure spiritual. And karma, there's no karma. But Prabhuji, that, apply, that is applied to devotees, right? Or to everybody? Oh, no, everybody, because everybody's a devotee, right? At the end of the day, ultimately, everybody's on the path back to Godhead. Okay. Because, so, yeah, it has to be. Okay. has to be. Different degrees. Different degrees. Mm -hmm. Different right. Degrees. Everybody's right. on the path. And that's mm -hmm. what the sage will think, that, yes, this is a plant at this moment in time. But if I cut this plant and offer it to the Lord, he's going to make swift progress to the Supreme Lord. 
If that dog is barking, he's a dog, yes. But if I give him some prashad, he's going to make swift progress. So the spiritualist, he will see everybody on the path to Krishna. Is, so um, if, if, we, if we don't have any karma, so how come we come in different species? No, we, karma comes with us. Ne? When we're in this material body, when we first came with, from the spiritual world, there was no karma. So we were yes. Brahma. We were the top living entity, the best of the best. But that best of the best became very <laughs> proud of the best of the best and slowly glided down mm -hmm. uh, the, the material uh, ladder, ladder yeah, <laughs> into samsara. Mm -hmm. So are you saying as animal you don't have karma? I think everyone has karma because to get the animal body, we, we had bad karma, yeah. then, then correct. we glide down. Right, right, correct, yeah, correct. Yeah, karma is, once, you, once you're in this world, <laughs> unless you're a devotee, you're right, unless you're a devotee, you're going to have karma. A devotee can destroy his karma because Krishna will do it for him. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, sorry, before Damudar, Ankit, what did you want to share? No, I was just I was just pondering on, on what we were, talk, we were talking about today, and I was thinking about you know there is one thing we enter this world with, and we and that's the breath, and we we enter with the breath, and we leave with the breath, mm. and it's something that we don't uh, often take a moment to appreciate, and uh, <laughs> there is a lot of there is a lot of power in our breathing, um, and there's a lot of energy, um, and we can bring a lot of focus to our minds in our meditation when mm. we focus on our breathing. Um, and they say, you know, Hanuman is the son of the wind. Uh, what mm. is he? He's the breath. Mm. Um, and and he, uh, I guess, everything that he sig he signifies devotion, um, strength. Um, I guess, yeah, that's uh, something I try to keep in in my right. mind mm. uh, when you we think about all right. of the. I guess the, the possessions and the, the things that we have in this material life, everything we've accumulated, um, mm -hmm. but we forget that every moment we're accumulating this breath and uh, there's a lot of power in it. Fundamental point, fundamental point, because uh, we actually don't even know how to breathe. You know, we just take it for granted, but actually, uh, for example, I remember when Jainty was learning a little bit about um, Mm. that you know you should take a breath deep deep breath every now and then every five minutes take a deep breath just breathe in just that alone improves the consciousness improves the digestive system mm. because, improves yeah because the, the more sorry. oxygen that you take in it helps with the digestion because that's part that is part of the formula for digestion. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's important. And also like like uh when we're born, I think somewhere I've read that you know you you're born with a number of breaths mm. during that life. So that, that's why yogis can live a longer life because you know they can control their breathing. They can stop, they can, you know, they don't have to breathe every second. They can breathe every, you know, one breath every minute, which will prolong their life as well. So we need to learn how to, you know, breathe properly and also help us like that. Um, because, you know, we have, uh, we are, we live on this uh, material, in this material body with, with an unlimited number of breaths. Mm. Yeah, they say, you know, uh, uh, Ram or uh, Rama is uh, the radiance and within me, that's Ra and Ma. Mm. And, um, you know, we, 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 we do only radiate because we can take this breath without, once, once the breath leaves us, it's, uh, you know, we usually depart from this, uh, this body. Mm -hmm. yeah, very true. Mm. Thank you, Ankit. Uh, Damuda? Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Just a uh, desire about talking about desire. It's come from mind actually. Ne? It's coming from mind. The desire? 
um, we have to distinguish because some desires are the mind's uh, inclinations, mm -hmm. but ultimately, ultimately, the only thing the soul can do is have desires. Mm -hmm. But you're right. See, the mind can fool us into thinking, I want pizza, I want pizza, I want <laughs> that's, pizza. That's actually, amazing, yeah. Actually, the soul. I want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want this. I want that. <laughs> we, we, the soul is thinking, yes, that's what I want. You know, that's really what I need to survive. But actually, that's only the mind playing tricks. So we have mm. to distinguish between the desires of the mind mm. and the uh, sorry, desires of the soul. These our real desires, and what the mind is throwing these googlies at us. You know. So that's yeah. a really important mm. question. Very, and it's a mm. very difficult mm. one to <laughs> get into. It's not easy to control the mind. You know, that's the main problem. Yeah. Easy to not control. Sometimes you see something nice and I, I want that, I want that. And, but you can change this desire to another, fulfill the, what's called, satisfy the Krishna. Yeah? Right. Yeah, spiritual desire. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. You yeah. change your desire to. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. How will it please Krishna? <laughs> yes. Yes. I like yes, that. Krishna. I like that, Jadamuda. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. We have to purify these desires. Mm -hmm. Because the more material desires we have, the more we will continue mm -hmm. to live in this world, mm -hmm. up and down the chain of yeah. samsara, you know, birth mm -hmm. as plant, animal, mm -hmm. human, demigod. Very good point. Very good point. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any any points? Any question? Anything that's not clear? So okay. Thank you so much. Uh, tomorrow, just wanted to let everybody know that at. Uh,